So the instruments come to be assembled. They're delivered in mainly three parts. The base, the column, and the instrument mechanism. We also have a set of keys, Allen keys. There's just two keys, one big one for this, and one small one is to adjust the friction, which I'll show later. There's also a cable, which is a simple USB printer cable, and an adapter. So, I'll show you how to put them together. We take the groove out of the column, there's a hole, there's a hole. There we go. And then just align the holes. And here, align the hole. And then the screw should just fit in. If it feels a bit tight, you can just move the column a little bit until the screw goes through. Okay. Lock it. Don't kill the thread. Just make it firm. No, over tighten. Now that should be the base of the column assembled. Next step is the instrument. The instrument, be careful with it, don't drop it, it's a delicate instrument, precision instrument with electronics. And loose the locking knob. Place over the column and slide down. Now, there's two friction screws on the back here. This is what the small key is for. These, you can make more friction for the sliding by tightening it, which is a clockwise movement, or less friction by anti-clockwise movement. And now you can see less friction, it starts to fall on its own. And you want it so that the instrument doesn't fall and damage itself when you unlock, just in case you forget any time, you unlock it and you're not holding it. So when you unlock it, it shouldn't fall. You should just apply some pressure to be able to slide it. Friction. Lock. When we deliver the instrument, we always wind the fine height adjustment all the way up to the top. So it's locked at the top now. It can't go any further. So it can only go down. That's just to help protect it during transport. So the fine height adjustment is here and down. This is the calipers for the brackets and this measures the thickness, but we lock it here for transport. This we have to turn half a turn and now we can move this. If I lock it, we can't move this. Half a turn, now we can check thickness measurements. Okay, cable. There's a simple printer cable adapter. 220 or 110. Put the USB end into the adapter. And the printer end into the instrument. There's only one way it can fit. And the instrument should come on when we switch up. The measurements are in 0.1 of a millimetre for both thickness and height. On the front, there's two buttons, one with a H, one with a T. These buttons serve to zero when we want to measure. So before we measure, we can zero the thickness. Now that is at zero millimeters. 
and then as we open it up it measures the distance from the jaw to the bracket holder and that's what we need to measure the thickness from the slot of the bracket to the vestibular part of the tooth very important for the lingual not important for the labial Hi. We can measure at any point we decide we can zero the height. And then when we turn clockwise, anti clockwise, it will go down, clockwise, it will go up. Okay. So we can measure the height from the occlusal surface of the teeth or any point we want to measure from. So the thickness goes to about 20 millimetres opening before it will just read over. That just means you've gone past the end of the sensor. When we're placing the bracket, always close the jaws. Close the jaws with the finger and slide the slot. This, the jaws are sprung and they hold the bracket quite firmly here. That's for placing the bracket. Then we need to be able to move this up and down enough to measure the two. If we move it up and it says down, then we need to use the gross height adjustment because it's too low. And then we can, for instance, I want to measure this tooth. I want to place a bracket on this tooth. So we come down with a fine height adjustment. Always a gross height adjustment, we should stop above the tooth. This should be reading already. So it should have numbers on it here. So it should have some numbers. And then the gross height adjustment, we don't want to come down to the tooth in case you damage the tooth. So you should lock it just above the tooth and then use the fine height adjustment to come down until you get contact with the cusp or until you align it with the part that you want to measure from. That's part of the lab technique. This is just showing you how the instrument works. So we get a light contact here and then you can zero. And then we can measure height. So for instance if I wanted to place this bracket at 3.5 millimeter, I would stop at 3.5 and then I can use the instrument to bring the bracket to the tooth. Whichever thickness we want to place, because we, that's part of the lab technique as well. That's in another video. This is just showing you how to use the instrument. Okay. After we bonded the bracket, then we use this to release the pressure from it. So we hold that while we pull away, and the bracket will then the jaws will slide out of the bracket with no friction because it's difficult to get our finger now underneath. That is the BPI. Very easy to use. Now you just need to learn the lab technique to know about lingual or label in our bundle. But the instrument, very easy to use. Procedure is the same for both instruments base, column, unscrew the screw from the column because it will be delivered. If it's delivered via FedEx, it will be delivered in a big box with polystyrene packing or everything separate. After unwrap everything, which will be covered in bubble wrap. <coughs> Align the holes. Use your key 
this key, yeah, say if it's screw won't go in at first, just jiggle it till you get the hole fully aligned and then lock it. Never over tighten, there's no need, just enough to lock it. All and done. Instrument again, unlock here, place over the top, and then the same thing, you should have the friction to go up and down, but not too not much, not too little, so if you let go it shouldn't fall, but you can just slide it. So, and this will wear in with time a little bit, so we need it to be a good friction control. The same thing as is here, we need to unlock. I will unlock this, wound it up, so this can go up and down. There's no measurement for this, this is just for working. This is just a fine height adjustment, but it doesn't measure anything like the other instrument. This is just facilitates our working procedure. But I will have locked this. This is the angulation locking screw, friction screw. So turn it half a turn and now I can turn this. If I turn it too much, it falls towards the sensor. So I need to get a little bit of tension on there so it doesn't fall anymore. But I can still turn it with my hand but it doesn't fall. And that is just a simple adjustment here according to how much you tight you want it. Some people like it tight when they're making measurements, so it's harder, easy, harder to move, but easier to control the amount we move. Friction control. Same underneath for the torque. Underneath here, we have to loosen. That's locked. We loosen that. Half a turn, and now we can turn this up and down. That's a torque knob. And that's the torque blade, angulation knob. Changes the angulation of the blade. Gross height adjustment, fine height adjustment. These are the sensors. You don't need to worry about them. So, the same thing, we plug in, same way. Just one way that this will go, like a printer plug. And then the instrument comes up. Zero and zero. Angulation measures 0.5. It actually measures 0.1 on the sensor, but we regulated it to be 0.5 because 0.1 movement by hand is just too difficult. And we don't need it for orthodontics. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So coming back, that says plus, because that would be as if we're measuring the left side of an upper arch. This is the base. Base is very easy to use, just like any surveyor base. You just unscrew here to remove your model. Place a model, tighten it, lock it. This allows us to move the base and then locks the base. And just like any surveyor base, just easy to use. So, angulation will change from the left side of the arch to the right. But torque never changes. I'll just show you how to use it. We get the mono, we've got the base, we can move it. You can move it to whatever plane you want. If you want to survey from a particular plane, you set that plane by reference points. With a dental surveyor or with the edge of this, you can align three points, four points, whatever. But the function of the instrument, that's what I'm showing you here, not how to do your orthodontics. 
function of the instrument is this is up and down with a linear slide. So you want this in the mid-range before you start measuring a model. Mid-range. And then bring the gross height adjustment down to approximately the middle of a tooth. There's a mark in the middle of the blade and you want to align that with the FA point. The middle of the clinical crown on the long axis. So, for instance, if I'm measuring the left side of the upper arch from 21 to 27, first I have to make sure that I'm measuring correctly, positive or negative. If the blade is leaning towards the midline at the top, it's positive. If it's leaning away, it's negative tip angulation but when I come to the other side of the arch now it's wrong it's leaning away it's positive leaning in towards the midline it's negative so we just press this button and it changes it just one press not hold it just press the other button is not any function don't need to use it the other button is for a later modification to the electronics if we need to, like a download or Bluetooth or something. So if I'm now measuring the 11, I would just bring up the height with the fine height adjustment until the middle of the blade is corresponding with the FA point. I look down the blade and make sure that my tip of the blade, the angulation of the blade is parallel with the long axis of the clinical crown. That gives us our tip and then this adjustment here gives us our torque. As I change the blade, my corresponding middle of the blade with the FA point has changed so I just adjust the height a little bit and top. The trick is also not just to fit the blade to the tooth. Here it's a measuring torque and we see that tooth retrocline so we have a torque of 4.3 minus 4.3. The trick is also to look at the space between the blade, zoom in on the space, eh? between the blade and the tooth because if we fit the blade to the tooth then maybe the morphology of the tooth will trick us. So we want the general inclination of the tooth. And that measures the torque. Inclination. Simple as that. A tooth can be surveyed in 30 seconds. Once we've set the plane you can measure a tooth, you can move to the next tooth on that side of the arch, set your tip, set your height, set your top and then you get an idea of what that tooth is in real values for tip and torque. Torque 1.5, tip is plus 6. Same, we move round. Very quick, very easy to use. That's it. We have another measurement. Minus 2.1 for the canine. Tall and tip of plus 2.5. That's quite that bright. So you can use these values in your planning, in your treatment planning, so that you can make personalised treatment plan for the patient, not just stick to a standard chart. You can measure the teeth and then decide roughly how much you want to move them. So you have an idea before you start what we started with, what's my goal. So if we come back to this side of the arch, it's wrong now because the tip is wrong, so I just press it again. Now I can measure 21.
you see now why I use a stand. So I'm looking. I'm not. If I was on the bench, I'd be doing this. I get a very stiff neck after half an hour. So best to use this on an elevated stand. I made this turntable myself. You can make a turntable, you can buy a Chinese dining table, you can put it on a box, whatever. This is a turntable from an index Chinese dining table that I removed. And then I use it. For shows, and I don't want to transport this and also for bonding in the lab, so I can just turn this. Because this you want to be above it. You don't want to be down, you want to be above to look when you're placing your brackets. This one, you want to look at it higher. That's measuring. If I want to set this tooth to a predetermined torque, let's say I want to set it to 10 degrees of torque, I want to increase that retroclination and change it to a positive torque then I set this is let's say zero I want zero tip 10 degrees of torque I can do that we just set the instrument and then change the two to fit the instrument so now we use the survey base to fit the two to the instrument. The same way as we did using the old TARG instrument for Monka, which had separate blades for each two. Now I fit that two to the instrument, lock it, and that one two, the 21, has been programmed in time, in space, to tip and talk individualized. So I'm going to bond this bracket to make sure that I can do the height with no problem. So now I can do different measurements if I want for height, what's called height and thickness measurements. They're all part of the lab technique which I'm going to show you in another video. This is just showing the instrument. So then I can just check the position of the bracket. With the tooth, it's parallel to the vestibular edge. So in its centre. My reference line. You can see now. Um, it fits um, the thickness here. No contact. Right. Zero. Down. Choose a measurement. Say 2.5. I want to test. 2.5. height we can see where it fits onto the tube, the relationship of the base and what the thickness is from the slot to the rest of the base. That will just make our wires afterwards without too many bends. That's it. We can do different heights. Number we want. Three. Further down two. Right contact. Thank you. 
five. Now the thickness starts to change a bit, 5.6, 3.5, a good fit. That's how we use the instrument. This is not the lab technique, I'm just showing the function of the instrument. So you can use it for lingual orthodontics case thickness is very important. You can turn it around and use it for labial orthodontics, so for labial bonding and move the tooth to the blade to the blade. Check the top, check the height, the play point, fit, everything fit. And we got the base. And this time we turn the model around. Bracket on the jaws, fit, not going to move, spring loaded. Now I'm going this 21, come down, same thing. And I want to take my height reference from my cable with the tooth, height zero, same from this 4.5. With this, you don't need to have a touch, a contact, if you don't want a contact. You don't have to have a contact with the back of the tooth. You don't need this can contact anywhere or not have a contact because you're not measuring thickness. And this time we have controlled the slot of the bracket. Even when we're bonding labial, we've controlled the slot of the bracket to be exactly the tip and the top we decided. If we bond by hand, then the tip and the top can change. We're not bothered about thickness. We bond as close to the tooth as possible with the labial. bracket with the slot, horizontal slot. We do have some other jaws which are separate which people can buy if they want which have a vertical slot for vertical slot brackets but for putting tubes, for placing tubes on the model we have to make a jig. We make our own jigs. This is a 22 jig for a 22 slot made from a molar bracket. When we put the jig on, we're going to change the thickness here. So we have to re-zero, re because this thickness is 5 millimeters. So I need to re-zero when I use a jig. So you can bond the whole arch molar to the first molar if you want, with horizontal slot. And the thickness won't change. It's still going to be measuring from the same reference point. But when you come to put a tube, then you need to use a jig. You need to re-zero before you place the tube. And you can slide the tube on there.
come down to my reference point for measuring, same as I do with number two. The first and second molars of the upper is the mesial lingual cusp. Contact, height zero. Now I'll combine this. When the tube's bonded, we release and the cheek will stay in the bracket. So it's important that we have left and right cheeks so we can remove the jig from the back. If we've already bonded this bracket, it's impossible to remove the jig this way. So we make left and right cheeks. <laughs>